Now we will start a program. We we'll start with the Secretary Brunes because I think it's the, it's the foremost in the minds of uh, people. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, let the cameras uh, be trained to. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, my statement will be very short. It's based on a letter which I wrote to you after uh, you made your statement about uh, not allowing uh, the opening of classes uh, during the time of COVID. And so uh, we are here from the DepEd to assure you that we are one with you in your uncompromising stand on the matter of the health and the safety of our learners and our teachers. Uh, you said, I will not allow the opening of classes na dikit-dikit ang mga bata para sa akin, bakuna muna bago anjan ang bakuna, okay na. Uh, we are saying because there is confusion uh, and anxiety among uh, Filipinos, families, especially the parents, we are, we are here to state that we are one uh, with you, Mr. President, in this non-negotiable uh, commitment. It is the first and the most important principle when we work out our uh, learning community plan with all the details, we stated this also. The first and foremost concern is the health and safety of our learners and our teachers. Uh, Mr. President, there has been a confusion among our people who associate uh, the opening of school with what we describe as face-to-face -face classes, uh, where uh, we are used to learners, we are used to teachers facing each other, and we are used to children going to school physically. But we are saying that there will be no face-to-face -face classes and sessions until we are assured of the safety of our children and our teachers. However, we also believe, Mr. President, that we can provide learning opportunities to our students without necessarily requiring them to go to school. And this we can do through what is described as blended and distant learning. Mr. President, this is not a new thing. We have many universities and schools which offer distant learning in many ways. We now call it blended learning because various approaches which are adjusted to the actual situation of the communities will be um, applied. But these are all, Mr. President, consistent with your preference that we should not be physically sending our children to school until it is safe to do so. Uh, what is the so-called blending or learning modalities? Because right now, there is a bill which is filed uh, in Congress on this. One, for those who don't have uh, connections, who don't have uh, interactive facilities, uh, there will be what we describe as printed material which will be delivered to the homes of the students through the barangays, can be picked up also by their parents at designated places within coordinated schedules. We'll be working very closely with the barangays and the local governments. And the second approach is now very popular, Mr. President. Uh, this is the online uh, learning uh, platform. And uh, we in DepEd, we have what we describe as DepEd Commons. Right now, we already have over 7 million uh, subscribers. We're in lessons, uh, homework, quizzes, tips to learners and to teachers are all in the DepEd Commons and are accessible even to the parents. So we have instances, Mr. President, of parents who are abroad and who are monitoring what is happening to their children, they also re go to the DepEd Commons and check on how their children are doing. Now, in cases, Mr. President, where there is no connectivity and printed materials may not be available immediately, we have the classic long-time uh, approaches, which have always been used in education 
and this would be television. Those uh, homes which do not necessarily have connectivity and may have television. And the most and the best used uh, approach, of course, is radio-based instruction. Kasi ang television, mga 1950s, 60s, radios have been around since the 1800s when it was first um, uh, invented. And we know that two world wars were won through radio uh, messages and not necessarily computers and so on. So yung printed modules, Mr. President, um, we have uh, a description of what it entails. And then also, uh, on the matter of online, ito yung popular talaga, it's gaining popularity, online distance learning with already 7 million subscribers. And um, we assume here that they have access to internet. And one worry is, how about the students and the teachers? Do they have access to laptops? We made a survey, uh, Mr. President, of teachers, more than about 788,000 of them, uh, to find out whether they have laptops or desktops in their homes. More than 80%, nearly 700,000, have laptops or desktops in their homes. Because teachers uh, acquire this for various uh, uses. They have family members abroad, or friends, etc., etc. So um, this is a very, very popular uh, mechanism for uh, dispensing education. Now for those who don't have access to uh, interconnectivity, then we have television. Right now, Mr. President, 15% of television time, this is provided by law, should be dedicated to programs, of, uh, programs designed for children. So there are already existing educational programs uh, on television stations. What we need to do is to utilize these programs to transmit our curricula. And we are working out uh, how to do this. Uh, for example, Mr. President, PCOO uh, is volunteering its TV facilities and also IBC 13, which is radio, for the utilization of lessons through radio and television. Radio and television for those who don't have access to a computer. Now, radio-based instruction is quite popular, Mr. President, because right now, municipalities are volunteering. Usually, municipalities have their radio stations. Cities have radio stations. There are local radio stations, and big networks also have uh, radio stations, and many of them have lessons, which uh, yung tawag nyon is um, uh, schools of the air. Um, mayroong mga uh, religious groups, they give lessons in agriculture, lessons in uh, whatever sciences over the air because alam nila uh, not everybody has access to television or to uh, online computers. So ito yung pinaka uh, ancient, pinaka matandang uh, paraan for, for teaching as an alternative to face-to-face. -to -face. Now, Mr. President, what we are doing in the regions is the regions are different from each other. Uh, some regions have many islands, some regions have many mountains, some regions have, uh, have interconnectivity, and so on and so forth. So what our regions are now do doing is to translate our curriculum from Curriculum for lecture, the teacher lectures the children uh, uh, for long periods of time. It has to be translated one into digital modes, sa platforms natin, into television programs because children have to be uh, taught uh, through in a different way. Iba yung effect ng television programs because their attention span can be very brief as well. And then also converted into radio scripts. So this is where much of the work is now being concentrated. What we are saying, Mr. President, is that we fully and completely support your stand that our children should not be exposed to the dangers of COVID-19 physically but we are also offering opportunities for them to continue 
their studies and their learnings. And some people ask, are we prepared? What we are trying to do, Mr. President, are not really new. Hindi naman to bagong invento. Because uh, distance education, many universities have the distance education programs. Many local governments have radio stations. We are utilizing existing ways of communication without necessarily uh, uh, requiring our children to go to school. So they can still go to school, they can still study, teachers can monitor them as well as their parents. So ito yung ano namin, Mr. President, which we would like to share with you, and we seek your approval of our um, alternative ways of learning, which are already existing right now. And these are being done by many schools, but this time, mas malaki ang emphasis because we are now shifting to less physical, face-to-face -face classes. But education will continue, uh, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, I'm impressed with the simplicity of the uh, program. And uh, I believe that uh, all that you have said is really feasible. Radio, Wolan television, and all of these things. I, I believe we have a very workable program, and I support you. Thank you and very should much. you require any help uh, from any of the departments, feel free to communicate with them. And with a question of funding, I will uh, uh, sort to speak scrape the bottom, the bottom of the barrel, barrel. Uh, <laughs> just to, well, kung wala na tayong pera, edukara lang sa, edukala lang sa edukasyon sa mga bata. We'll have to forgo many things uh, along the way uh, because of uh, what happened. But uh, education, I think, uh, if, it, if it is uh, compromised, it should be negligible. So that it should go on, because uh, uh, the future of this country depends on the how we educate our young people nowadays. I agree with you in this program. I support you, and if there's anything that we can do, the ALG and uh, or whatever, uh, we you. will. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, President. Endeavor to help you.